Nancy Murrah is both the founder and the president of the Raptor Center of Tampa Bay. Um, Nancy spent many years, she's been in the, in the learning arena for many years. She was the director of learning for um, one of the largest insurance companies in America. Um, but now she is currently a federally and state permitted wildlife rehabilitator. And uh, today she dedicates her life to rehabilitating wildlife especially birds of prey. Um, Nancy's a native of Tampa who is always teaching others about wildlife and the importance of conserving wild lands and clean water for animals and people alike. She is also a local writer of children's stories. Of, she's a facilitator, photographer, and illustrator. So uh, with that, Nancy, we're looking forward to seeing, seeing your owls. Well, hello, everybody, and thanks for having us. We, we um, will be glad when we're back to in-person meetings. Um, um, so, but the owls are thrilled to be here because they did not have to leave home. So um, I have Kat Parnist, um, our vice president with us today, and Susie uh, Buchanan, who is also with us um, and does all our education programs too. And we have with us today um, two Eastern Screech Owls. We have um, Carmen, and she's an Eastern Screech Owl. And uh, Carmen is a rescue. Um, Eastern screech owls are found throughout um, throughout uh, the the Tampa Bay area and throughout Hillsborough County. Um, let me, they, let me they, pause you, hey, Nancy. Let me pause you just a minute. If everybody would take their view and put it on speaker view, you'll get a big full shot of Nancy and the owls. Speaker view in the upper right hand corner of your Zoom. I'm sorry. Okay, now go ahead. That's okay. It's a good thing they have you, Rocky, because I'm technologically inept when it comes to these calls. Um, so, so again, Carmen was um, a rescue of ours, and we rescued her about five years ago. She she was an adult, and she was hit by a car. And you can see she has a um, damaged eye and a damaged wing. But um, the the interesting thing is, from a, a birding perspective, is is that almost every owl we count we get from south of Gandhi Boulevard is a red morph like Carmen. Um, they do come in different colors. The red, you see, this is moon pie. And moon pie has a, um, was also hit by a car. And any bird that you see, um, a bird of prey that you see in captivity, um, generally has some type of disability. Now, moon pie can fly, um, but she can't catch anything. And she has a very bad beak and she has a bad eye too but she tolerates us. And so she got to uh, become an educational ambassador and uh, Carmen and Moonpie go out um, probably about eight times, um, eight or nine times a quarter, I would say, you know, they are required by law to go out 12 times a year. And uh, even though they will spend their life with us, they are, um, they're technically owned by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. We do carry federal permits for them. We um, are rehabilitating red-shouldered hawks, and that's what you hear screaming in the background. Um, is is a red-shouldered hawk baby, a young youngster. So, um, so we we're going to talk about owls, and you know, these are the are one of the smallest owls that we have here um, in Central Florida. And in addition to these owls, of course, we have the little burrowing owls. Um, they're a little bit um, they they might not actually physically be bit bigger, but they have longer legs, so they they run and spend more time on the ground catching things. And um, then we also have the barn owls, and uh, Rocky and I both are very fond of the barn owls and and an owl that you just don't see very much. And I'm happy to say that over the years, over the last twelve years, we've gotten several clutches of barn owls from around the Tampa Bay area, and um, we put up barn owl boxes everywhere that we get them. And the thing that's uh, been great is uh, we don't get, we, we do not get owls from there um, continually. You know, uh, there was um, a point in time where we got the same, uh, the same, we thought the same group of owls and it turns out there was actually six owls um, and we were getting their babies. So we had to put three boxes up. And once we got the third box up, we stopped getting babies. So um, one of our goals at the Raptor Center is to really uh, try to, as like I said, we'll never be able to put ourselves out of business because 80% of what we get is uh, human related. You know, whether that be um, running into windows, running into cars, getting a bit by feral cats. Um, what are some of the other things that happen? Oh, for the birds? Yeah. It's 
the hit by cars is the big one. Um, some of the others. Oh, well, man-made, man-made, you know, just size. Yeah, rat poison is terrible. Rat poison is terrible. Well, uh, but, yes. So we um, we have worked to try to, um, you know, really everywhere we pick up poison owls, we have brochures, we try to educate people about rat poison. But I think that's one of the biggest, rat poison is one of the biggest, I think, threats, especially to our owls. Um, I know that a lot of birds of prey, you know, do eat rats, um, but the owls eat rats a lot. And because they're, they're hunting at night and the uh, rats are out at night, um, it's, it's a uh, tragic you know, thing because if the owl gets a poison mouse, typically they will die too. Um, there are some more, they say safe uh, poisons on the market today, um, but there's a great organization called Raptors Are the Solution. And they are, if you, if you look them up, we might need to, I don't know if we can do something about taking that bird. <laughs> Be quiet. The, the red shoulder hawk is here, is loud. Is he really loud to you guys? No. Okay. All right. So um, the, the rat poison is something that, you know, we have tried to work on and, and really, uh, you know, make a difference with that. But the um, little birds of prey like this are just subject to a lot of things. And right now, all these little owls are fledging. And so we're getting a lot of calls for baby owls on the ground that truly are baby owls. Um, but many times people think that these are, um, that these owls are also, um, sorry about that. Moon Pie decided she was gonna take off. She's, she's sure had enough, sure. she's had enough. So she, um, there you go. So they, um, they're, I don't know if anybody has any questions about these owls. They're, they have little ear tufts. One thing you notice that's interesting is you notice Carmen's are up and Moon Pies are flat to her head. They are an indication of mood. And you can see that Carmen is much more comfortable on the glove. And so she is, um, so she's just mellow and her little tufts are up. You can see that Moon Pie is more stressed. She doesn't understand why we're standing in the backyard with her on leash. Now so. she's panting. Yeah, but she's panting just like a dog would pant. Mm -hmm. um, stressed a little bit, and she is a little stressed. Kind of wonder why we're we're here. But um, does anybody have questions? I don't know how uh, you know you can put yes. them over to us. But what what do they feed their babies? They feed their babies um, all kinds of insects as well as small mice and baby rats. Um, but these guys, the favorite food of these of these owls in Florida is those big nasty roaches we all hate. The palmetto bugs and roaches they eat a lot of. Um, so we do find them. Any caterpillars? They eat, no, they do not. Okay. I don't know much of anything that eats a caterpillar, to be honest with you. Oh, we do. You know, that, that's a dangerous proposition for a bird. <laughs> so... Um, Sure. But they do, uh, they eat mealworms, they eat crickets, they eat mice, and they're not, th these two owls in particular are not big chicken eaters. Um, some of the bigger owls do eat chicken, but, uh, and we feed, the, the hawks love chicken, but these guys, um, you, you can keep the chicken, that's the night they'll decide not to eat. They eat a lot of lizards so, too. Yeah, they do. You're right, Rocky, they love lizards. Um, they, uh, and so do kestrels. In fact, the uh, Audubon Center for Birds of Prey got a baby kestrel in and it had a very distended abdomen and they thought something was wrong with the bird. And when they x-rayed it, it found out that it had eaten even at this little tiny thing and it had eaten a whole big lizard and had a lizard inside its gut. Um, and they were not even sure how he could have eaten a lizard as big as a lizard was. But um, they do they do love all kinds of little insects, beetles, uh, you know, like like a roach, um, they will eat. Um, but here they get mealworms, crickets, mice. That's predominantly what they eat. So anybody else have any other questions about these guys? Nancy, I know the answer, but I'd like for you to tell everybody that how common the Eastern screech owl is in our neighborhoods. You know, it's unbelievable how common they really are. What's the matter? Um, okay. The... Um, I, I would say almost every neighborhood in Tampa has screech owls. They are um, small and they would be in, it, you notice like behind me, there's a fishtail palm. Um, they, would they would be up in this fishtail palm and unless you hear them, you may not ever know they're there. Um, people that see them, I know in South Tampa, 
Um, the red ones seem to be seen more, and I don't know why. Um, but I, I, uh, I, I think that especially south of Gandhi, it's their area is fairly saturated with um, screech owls, M much more common than you would think. And the red ones are more likely to be in a in a pine tree because of the coloring. Right. And this one would be more likely to be in an oak tree because of the coloring. So, and at one point, you know, we all know that uh, south of Gandhi was predominantly longleaf pines. In fact, the largest eagle nest ever recorded came was right there at Gandhi and West Shore before the area was developed. And you know why? Because that little area jutted out into the bay and they have water on all sides and can get in and out of the water really quickly. Um, but they, uh, they, they're, they're very common. Um, we have them in our neighborhood. They've been in this very tree that I pointed out. Um, they're, uh, they like to nest in uh, dead palm trees. They, de they will get in anything, they're cavity nester. So they're gonna be in a hole. Um, but you'll find them up in soffits. We find them in people's porches, you know, that have holes in their screens. Uh, they, they, and people are very, always very surprised um, to know they have these owls in the neighborhood. So if, if does anyone have any questions about this, we could talk about some of the other kinds of owls we have and some of the cool things about them. And I'm gonna actually see if I can get, uh, I'm gonna give the phone to one of these ladies and I'm gonna take Moon Pie and put her up because she's stressed, but I will bring another owl out um, for you guys. So there's the phone. Mm -hmm. I'm taking this. And Hi I'm guys. That owl. So while she's doing that, I was I participated in a screech owl survey over in Pinellas County several years ago, and it was about 15 of us, and we tallied 485 screech owls in about six hours in in Pinellas okay. County. That's how common they are. Wow, fantastic. All, three, all three colors, all three colors, brown, red, and gray. Fantastic. Because they have a small territory, so it's pretty easy to count because they have a pretty small territory. Not like the Great Horned Owl, which is huge territory. Correct. And that Great Horned Owl is that apex predator. They have stronger torque pressure in their talons than a bald eagle. Uh. The Carmen here is quite curious. Um, she's been with us the longest. She's, this is just her, another day at work for her. <laughs> How long have you had her? Five years. About five years? And she was an adult when she came in. Yeah. So she's at least six. She's at least six <laughs> years old. Could be older. And how old do they live? If they're, if they're it, I know it depends on... Yeah, if they run into totally a problem depends. or not, but if if they don't run into any problems, what's an expected lifespan? About ten years. About ten years. But in captivity, it'll be longer. Yeah, ten years in the wild, but in captivity, definitely longer because we've definitely seen them live longer than twenty years uh, in captivity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there was a, a question. Um, um, can visitors go to the center? No, no we, right now we do not have um, yeah. visitor access to the center. What we are working on is a, our magical bird bus who is going to take our education programs and ambassadors on the road and bring them to you. Um, and so we can schedule events to have uh, any of our ambassadors or all of them come to corporate events, schools, parties, day, a Thursday poker night, we'll be there. Um, and it's all about changing the world one child at a time and uh, bringing our animals out to anyone uh, that would like to meet them and to just spread that education. And do the people, will the people be able to go on the bus in or do you take the owls out off, you know, out of the bus to show them? Right. We would be taking the animals off of the bus to show them and stuff. But I'm going to pass this phone over to Miss Susie because Nancy has another owl to show you. So here we have another one of our ambassadors. This one's in training. And are you in it? Yeah, uh, I'm the Charlie's in it, the owl's in it. Okay. That's all that's important. Um, so. Uh, this is Charlie and he came from Lake Wales and he is, uh, as you were guys were just talking about, uh, the apex predator. 
Um, Charlie came to us because he was uh, fell out of his nest. He was one of three. He was at um, Lake Wales Park is where he was. Very photographed nest. And you guys know that the photographers go nuts over these big owls and actually harass them in my opinion. <laughs> but they, um, he was well photographed and he came out of the nest very young. We got him, we re-nested him and um, he was actually attacked by a cat. Um, uh, a cat is a feral cat that was in the neighborhood who obviously had a death wish because he was in the tree with five great horned owls and um, managed to survive, but he um, actually uh, hit this owl in the face, knocked him out of the nest and um, it resulted in the, him being blind in his right eye. And he has uh, also compromised vision in his left eye and a fractured coracoid, um, which is a cool bone that birds have that's kind of like a strut on an airplane wing. It gives their wing stability. And so they, uh, he didn't heal right. So he doesn't hunt worth a darn. And because we got him back when he was a baby, he is, as you notice, at a year old, still making baby sounds. So there he goes. Um, that's a baby owl sound that he still makes because he likes being with us. But he is, um, he is a, he has a great horned owl and, and very, um, still, like I said, still in training. If we would have done the presentation live, we would not have really brought him with us because even though we've applied for his permit, we haven't received his permit back from U.S. Fish and Wildlife to be able to take him out places. But he'll, he'll be another one of our ambassadors. And to me, he's certainly one of the most beautiful owls that there are out there. He's extremely strong. Um, he has 550 PSI and his feet, uh, gripping strength. And um, does anybody know, uh, no, I know Rocky, you know the answer, but does anybody know what their, what his favorite food would be in the wild? No idea. <laughs> well, his favorite food in the wild would be a, a striped skunk. So, um, which, you know, that, that he, people ask me, well, this bird, will a bird like this attack your cat? And it definitely will. There's much more of a chance if you have a black and white cat. Um, because it's not because they're hunting cats, it's because the cat resembles their natural prey. And the reason I say that distinctly is, as I, you know, coyotes are prevalent throughout. I mean, we even have them here, right here. They've gotten my backyard several times. And um, the coyotes are hunting your cat. <laughs> you know, make no mistake about it. There is a difference. Um, these birds is an incidental take because they're thinking, geez, that animal's just exactly the right size. It looks like a skunk or a possum or a raccoon or something I normally would have for dinner. Um, but they love mice and rats and they like to eat small things um, as well. And they, they do eat bugs, although we don't feed, um, we don't feed Charlie any bugs. He predominantly eats um, rats and mice and quail. So, but he came to us once he was blinded and he came to us. So he's fully, he, he can fly, but he doesn't fly good. He doesn't fly straight. Um, but the other thing that's really interesting about um, owls in general is um, their feathers. And I don't know, Susie, if you can actually, he says no, no. Um, okay, you're okay. Um, if you can actually see the edge of his feathers, but their feathers it, it, right here, if you could actually see that, they're, um, they have a very rough edge on their feather. It's not smooth like an eagle. And so they, that is what allows them to fly completely silent. If he took off flying, he could sneak right up on you and you would never have any idea that, um, that he was coming. So that's one of their major uh, weapons is, is they fly silent. Um, they, they hear really well. And so Al's, if he was in the, in the wild and had his vision compromised, he may be able to survive still by hunting by sound. Um, but him with the combined with the, the fall and the, the fracture in the shoulder girdle, um, he became non-releasable. So he's, uh, he's fairly new to, to, uh, to all of this, you know, in terms of um, training him. And the way we train him is we use um, falconry gear. So you can see he has anklets. You can also see that he lets me touch his feet, which is something that, okay. Um, something that, um, that, you know, we work hard to allow him to, to get that level of trust to be able to touch his feet. If you touched a wild great horned owl's foot like that in the wild, you would be bringing back a little shredded, shredded hand. Um, I've seen 
twice I've seen great horned owls talents go straight directly through uh, someone's hand that wasn't wearing a glove. So they, uh, they are very strong. They, they do, um, you know, he's done well and for, as far as getting trained um, to do this because this is his life. And uh, his mission will be to talk to people about rat poison and, and uh, different things in the environment um, that affect them, but all kinds of toxins, as you, as you guys know, at Sierra Club, you're, you're masters at knowing the, all the terrible things that are happening to our environment. Um, and, uh, but Charlie really is an ambassador to talk uh, specifically about um, rat poison and cats outside. Um, if, if there was not a feral cat outside, this bird would still be flying wild. Do you have any questions about, about him? He has ear tufts, just like the, the small owls do. And you notice his tufts are laying flat to his head right now because he's you know trying to figure out exactly yeah. what we're doing. So why are we talking to the telephone? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> explain about the tufts. Uh, we know they're ear, not ears, but they not, help not. What are the tufts? Why they got tufts? Well, there's the... It's like I said, for, for me, Rocky, you might be able to answer that better than me. Um, you know, they definitely are, like I said, an indicator of, of mood and they're an indicator of when they see each other in the wild, um, how that works. But I'm sure there's another function that I am not, not uh, telling you guys. Yeah, well, there, there are a couple of reasons. One is a distractor for enemies because it makes them bigger, but also it helps funnel the sound so just like their eye disc, with their eyes are shaped this way to help funnel the sound. Correct. So. And, I, I, and in reality, uh, a feral cat doesn't fare to get too well against a great horned owl one on one. No, and they're they're very hard to sneak up on. You know, he doesn't see out of his right eye at all. And my husband has spent quite a bit of time with him as we've been training him. And uh, they actually, he can, my husband come out here and talk to him. They will start hooting back and forth. But he, um, uh, he, my husband said to me, you know, I can never sneak up on him. I'm always, you know, as quiet as I can be. And I'm standing there, but he always knows I'm there. And I said, you do realize we're big animals and he can hear your heart beating. And, and, and my husband was like, no, I, yeah, they definitely, they hear excellent. And barn owls, or what's considered to be one of the best ear, uh, hearing animals on the planet. Um, you know, they can hear a mouse uh, from a mile up in the air, um, but they definitely are great. At, they can hear phenomenally and they detect us. They, you can't sneak up on an owl. If, Why if does they're in a cage. Throat move? Why did his throat move? He's panting just like a dog would pant. Okay. He's nervous. Yeah, he's nervous. Um, Again, you know, it's interesting because we do a lot of programs. Now, Charlie hasn't gone out on a lot of programs yet because we're waiting for his permit to come from U.S. Fish and Wildlife, which, by the way, takes forever. This, I think we applied for it four months ago. Um, but he, um, there are a lot more people that are doing education with birds, U.S. Fish and Wildlife tells us, um, and owls certainly are one of the most popular um, for a lot of people and maybe some people even in this audience. Um, if you're not a fan of, of birds overall, they're usually still a fan of owls. So, um, you're going to look back? Nancy, so, there's a, oh, I'm sorry, finish what you're saying. No, that's okay. I'll take it. If there's a question, I'll take well, a Well, there was a, a comment. Uh, do you ever wonder why screech owls can nest in a tree very close to a great horned owl nest? Obviously, they would be prey for the great horned owl, but they seem to avoid being eaten, at least in, in this person's experience. I would say that there's an adequate food. Um, I'd say there's adequate, you know, food supply for the uh, great horned owl so that um, the owls can actually, um, so that the owls can actually, actually are full. You know what I mean? It's like they don't, they don't, the, 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 great, the little screech owls, require a lot more effort because they can fly away. And, and even though great horned owls um, could get them, great horned owls are not typically hunting in flight like a falcon. You know, mostly all your falcons actually catch birds in midair. And these birds are not doing that. But um, they certainly, um, you know, my guess would be there's plenty of rats or mice. And so they didn't need to eat anything else. I don't think plucking the bird is easy as eating a, a rat because you know that rats, they swallow whole. Fairly good sized rat, I can tell you a rat that's, what is that, four inches? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it goes right down the gullet. Just won't one swallow, it's gone. So they do eat their whole their their prey whole, and in captivity, um, they have to have whole body prey. So um, we had a great horned owl like this uh, earlier this year that we got from Lithia, and the people were feeding it moon pies. I'm not kidding, moon pies, um, put cookies, you know. Um, and we've had them feed, try to feed them bird seed, and you know all kinds of other stuff. But they're strictly carnivores, and uh, but I I've, I've just seen them, you know, in neighborhoods where people feed them. Well, it, anything you could imagine. Um, and I don't know how they're eating it, but the moon pie owl, I'm happy to tell you, was taken into custody and uh, rectified his little behavior. And we actually let him go at the Avon Park bombing range. And I know that maybe doesn't sound like a great per- place for a bird, but it really is. They understand the, where they're, you know, what they're doing out there for, some, for whatever reason. It's rich with wildlife but there's not another human being and within a 10 mile radius of where we released him. So he can't go try to beg for moon pies from anybody else. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know what people are thinking. We get, um, we also have uh, a lot of, um, Ooh. yeah, there, he had something to say. He said, no moon pies for him. Um, I think he sees something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but he do is- they, uh, Do they eat squirrels? Yeah, oh yeah. They most definitely eat squirrels. Squirrels, raccoons, possums, um, a young fox kit, uh, young coyote, um, anything that is, um, you know, fairly small, even though that they are, um, you know, big time predators, they can't pick up, you know, anything that weighs more than they do. And they don't weigh a whole lot. So, um, you know, Charlie only weighs about two pounds, just to give you an idea. So he's about 1,800 grams, he weighs, you know, between there, but he's less than two pounds. They really don't weigh much of anything. The most, the biggest bald eagles that we rescue, um, the biggest one is weigh 10.5 pounds. Um, they're usually around between seven and nine pounds um, on a bald eagle. And the, it, the, the, this bird is much stronger than a bald eagle. This bird would take a bald eagle's nest and the bald eagle would let him um, because the bald eagle can go build another nest. And these, don't, th- these birds, yeah. no, no owls build their own nest. They all steel nests from other birds or cavities or wherever they may, uh, you know, we found them nesting in different kind of really strange, funny places. What's up with you? Osprey nests, they take those a lot too. They do, they do. I say, you know, here we go out in the woods looking for these birds everywhere. And where do you find them out in the sunshine on on an Osprey platform on a, you know, US 301 or something, right? So, um, but they are, uh, they, the, the other thing I was going to mention when we were talking about their feathers is this, the, these feathers that are right close to their mouth. Um, and you can, uh, you can see them really well. And that is, they use those to detect food when they're babies. Um, when they're babies before their eyes open, we take the food and actually touch those like they're like whiskers almost, right? And the bird instantly will open its mouth um, when, it's a, when it's a baby, a uh, little youngster. So he's uh, he he is young and he he also will live a long time like the screech owls. They live a long time in captivity. Um, in the wild, their life is greatly reduced because of um, uh, hunting and being a bird of prey is not easy. In fact, only fifty percent of birds of prey uh, make it to be a year old. Um, so they they do have a quite a tough battle ahead of them. Um, trying to catch prey and their prey base for young birds is. Um, is greatly, you know, you have to have a lot more animals. And for an example, we talked about the, like the peregrine falcon or the cooper's hawk that we have here locally, you know, they catch birds, of, they catch birds in the air. Well, an expert cooper's hawk that's five or six or seven years old, they might only need five birds to fly through the air for them to catch one because the young birds learning how to catch, it might need a hundred birds to fly by to be able to catch one. So the prey base is, is extremely important um, for the youngsters. They need more prey to choose from because they have a harder time catching it. And, uh, you know, they do, all birds of prey, you have to remember that everything that they want to eat wants to eat them back. So, um, so the owls, we don't have barred owls with us today. We actually have barred owls in our flight cage right now. And, you know, those are the owls that the who cooks for you owls. Um, 
they are they are swamp owls and um we're right here in brandon is where we are and there's a pair that live around here that every time we have them in rehab the wild owls come and sit in the trees and talk back and forth and back and forth and i don't know what they're saying but i don't think it's good <laughs> you know they're very territorial um you know so you have the barred owls and we talked about barn owls just a little bit the beautiful white faced owls um that we love and uh just becoming increasingly mm -hmm. rarer or rarer. Mm -hmm. So you also notice that when he hoots, if you can hear him, can you guys hear him hooting? How smart are they compared to most birds? Um, not as smart as a red-tailed hawk, um, but smarter than a red-shouldered hawk, if that makes any sense. They're not, in terms of being smart, they, uh, I would say the smartest bird we deal with is probably a vulture. Uh, well, crows, by far the crow. The crow is the most intelligent, um, but the um, vultures are very intelligent and red-tailed red hawks are very clever and smart. You know, when we have a rescue of a red-tailed hawk, the rescuer gets there, especially if they're fairly new, I say, you know, where is it? And it, they, I don't know, I lost it. I'm like, it's, it's there, it's hiding. And they are so clever, a red tails are, I've seen bald eagles do this too, where they actually will lay down under a philodendron uh, leaf or a, um, a palmetto palm, and they will lay down, they'll spread their wings out and they'll put their head flat to the ground to hide from you. So most of the birds are just are not that intelligent to do that. Um, where the red shouldered hawk is, I mean, the red tailed hawk is. The, the vultures are, fascinating in that they live in a social hierarchy in their own world so really quickly within 24 hours they get that you're the one with the food so it's not uncommon to have a vulture um, by the second day that they would take food directly right out of your hand without biting you um i i, I can feed charlie hand feed charlie um these little owls don't like to be hand fed our cara cara is is always um hand fed um, and that just keeps our relationship with her because she's a high strung falcon. Um, but we're not going to bring her out because we've already had her out today once. So um, we were going to have a, this big, huge tree in the backyard cut down. And so we moved all the birds and these guys were already in, in, in a, under the enclosure, but we moved her and she is none too happy with me right now. <laughs> she will stomp her feet and tell you right then and there she does not want to be messed with yeah she's a teenager too so need i say more <laughs> you know so a little bit past cara cara breeding season i mean rocky when do, do cara caras they're just at the end of their breeding season right the juveniles are i've left the nest yeah they should be leaving the nest but the thing about crested <laughs> cara cara which is a falcon they do a after they leave the nest where great horned owls, barred owls, screech owls, they kind of stay in their home territory where they're born. Uh, crested caracaras roam quite a bit, yeah. So, and that's kind of one of my passion birds. And I have found a few in Hillsborough County, there's no records of nesting in Hillsborough County for quite a while, but there's some suspected spots. Uh, we have to talk, Rocky. Wow. <laughs> Um, nothing's cuter than a baby cara cara, right? They look like a, they look like a big, big one with those cute little beaks. Um, adorable. Only your mother could love a cara, baby cara cara. Oh, come on, <laughs> come on. We we love all the babies over here, right? So we talked about uh, barred owls, barn owls, gray horned owls. We didn't talk about burrowing owls. You know, we have we do have some burrowing owls um, in Hillsborough County, not many, but. Uh, um, Audubon is working hard to try to do that with the Project Perch, where they're actually installing the artificial burrows like they did down in the Cape Coral area um, and trying to bring the burrowing owls back into this area. Um, they were pretty predominant throughout Southern Hillsborough County. And when the development came in, unlike um, Fort Myers, you know, Hillsborough County didn't do anything to accommodate the owls. And they will move onto a um, you know, they'll move within a 50 mile, you know, radius of where they, where you, you know, kind of move them to, they have a capability of if they're moved to take off and, and go back to where they came from, if that's not more than 50 miles, but, um, but they are a, a, a funny little um, bird, uh, you know, to be close to or to rehab. Um, they, we do have, in fact, I don't know if you can see it. Well, it's kind of back in the corner, but we have a big black pipe that's a big drainage pipe 
um, which is where they nest a lot of times. And when we have them in rehab, we actually make a burrow for them so that they are used to kind of being in that all the time. But they um, they get real, real upset and bark like a dog. I mean, you don't ever hear them do that in the wild, right? They're like, ah! they just like really go at you, you know, when you, you try to um, do it. Another funny thing that they do that you only get to see, um, you know, in rehab, everyone I've ever had um, does this where they actually take um, all the, the water that we put on the ground for them is shallow, you know, you don't want to put something deep for a little bird. And they, every single one of them has taken the sand. We do put sand in the bottom of the cage. We try to make it as, as natural as we can for them. And they'll take that sand and they'll fill that water bowl up with sand every single night. And, and I don't know why, but everyone I've ever had has done that. So, and we don't get many, we get one or two a year. Um, you know, screech owls are, are, I mean, excuse me, burrowing owls, not real prevalent here. So that's one reason we don't get them. And another reason is, is many times their burrows are flooded out or crushed. And so the birds are killed instantly and we don't get a chance to get them and, and try to save them. So, but they're very cool. They like open pasture land um, and, uh, and, you know, they, they will live in a gopher tortoise burrow and they can also dig their own burrow, but they do, usually don't. They're usually found in, you know, in an artificial burrow now because they've been putting them in everywhere. And in, um, and a lot of times in gopher, gopher tortoise burrows. So, um, but the, those are the, the owls that were around here. Of course, one, one time, I think it was five years ago, we had the snowy owl that came to Jacksonville. I don't know if any of you ever went to see it. Um, I did and uh, did get to see it. So um, as I tell people, yeah, there's snowy owls in Florida too, but only once, once, but I saw yeah. it. <laughs> so, um, but there's, you know, you have a lot of other very cool owls that live around the United States, the long-eared owls and short-eared owls and the sawwit owls, which are the owls that have the real round face with their, their facial disc, very predominant. And um, you also have... Um, like the big great gray owls that are in the way, you know, up in the, in the north, way up Michigan and, and uh, Oregon, and we never see them down here. But, uh, hey, Mom. yeah, Susie's hey. being the cameraman here. Uh, so, can you keep um, moving? We're going around in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. They get, they get to see something else. We could actually, if you wanted to, do you guys want to see the Caracara? Cara? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to put Charlie up really quick. And if you guys, just, if you want to just walk over there very okay. slowly, and I say slowly only because that, that doesn't mess with them, the people in the audience. And I'm just going to put Charlie up. And then you can go so uh, Nancy, while they're doing that, let me tell you that uh, Hillsborough County ELAP site has a, a place where there are actually two um, nests of burrowing owls. It's on a preserved site. Uh, there are yep. like eight, seven or eight birds there. Actually, Gary Gibbons and I got the privilege of uh, for doing some photography for the county there and that colony is doing very well and that's probably the most stable i'm not going to say it's the only colony but it's the most stable colony in the county you used to be able to when i first moved to tampa 20 years ago i could actually drive and probably see 40 boroughs within hillsborough county they used to be across the street from Riverview High School. They were in the field where they built Riverview High School. And those birds. Wow. Are in fact, there they, are some in Sefner because I went for a rescue at uh, in Sefner and there was a so. burrowing owl. How long ago? And uh, it, it was in a field and somebody had plowed it up and, and the bird didn't have a clue what was going on, you know. But, and something else, something else that happens, uh, farmers. If they find a um, a burrowing owl in their pasture, they'll bulldoze it over because they don't want their. Yeah, cow. We, we've actually had some people in Polk County get to know us real well lately um, because of that. So, um, let me see. Here she is. Here's the girl. Rocky. When yes. I was in grad school in 1972, there was a large burrowing owl uh, um, colony on the campus of USF on the north. Uh, west side and a graduate student did his work on them. Now they put the med school and school of public health there. Well, they used to be at Wolf Ranch Cake too, Nancy. Yeah, no, I knew that. I knew that. I've seen them out at Cockroach Bay. I've seen a juvenile out there before. 
but so we ran them was. out. Yes, we did. Now they put now Puck was a uh, ju juvenile when we got her. Was shot in Avon Park. We since have picked up four Kara Kara in that same area over the last five years. They all have been shot. Um, and one of them was able to be released. And we have Puck, and one of them lives at um, Bush Gardens Williamsburg, and a falconer has the other one. And um, it's just, we alerted FWC, and uh, we had articles in the newspaper. Um, but there's clearly somebody shooting birds in Avon Park. And of course, the further out in the country you go, the worse it gets in terms of people actually just, you know, discharging firearms and, and killing birds needlessly. So but another big battle we face. The, the sad part about Crested Care Care, it's a, uh, it doesn't take live birds. That's not his main part of its diet. It does take some live birds, but its main part is carcasses. But and people, but farmers will shoot them. They'll find a dead animal or dead chicken. And they see the crested care fly over and they shoot it because they think the well, crested they're, care. Yeah, they're not a. Uh, she doesn't. Um, you know, she doesn't ever eat. She doesn't like chicken that much, but she she loves quail. That's her favorite thing. When she goes out and does her her gigs out, you know, when we take her out, she's been with us five years. Um, we've had her um, the entire time. Um, we've had her since she was four months. Wow. Oh, I got her back. There, am I back? Yeah. Right, there's, there's Puck, she's back. But she's a very cool bird and she is a, extremely tolerant of a lot of things, but this is not a bird that I touch her feet. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> you can see she has some, some nice talons on her. So you're gonna say you're gonna say goodbye to the folks. You want to say anything? She says, "Yeah, I'll say you can. You can leave me alone in my cage." <laughs> so, but she's a she is actually um, she does really well in terms of um, performing, and she's um, she's a great. She really is a great uh, ambassador. Whoop! There's my hand. There we go. So, so what else can we tell you about our owls or that we could tell you a little bit about the Raptor Center? Did you tell about the bus? I touched briefly on our bus. I did. Um, I was going to, right when you came out, I was going to start telling you about the, the Wonder of the Wildlife Festival. Oh, well, go ahead. Uh, well, first off, to tag on to the bus, um, we have a couple uh, events coming up at Wild Birds Unlimited, uh, one in Carrollwood and one in Trinity. Um, one in May and one in June. You can watch the artists paint our bus. We have a uh, local artist, Terry Claren, that is hand painting the outside of this bus. And it is incredible the work he is doing uh, from eagles to sandhill cranes to birds and all gonna be wrapping around the other side with estuaries and sea life. Um, and those two events are coming up and you can follow us on Facebook uh, and our events page will have those. Our big festival is our Wonders of Wildlife Festival. It is on November 11th on Veterans Day at Edward Medard Park in Plant City. We'll have over 40 vendors, food trucks, uh, live bird of prey show. Most of the local rehabbers will be there. A skunk rescue to a bat lady, reptiles, night wings, Zoo Tampa, Manatee, Manatee Viewing Center, just Arts. to name a few. We have a live muse, uh, live mermaids, um face painting kids zones and it is just a wonderful event uh so mark your calendars for that date and definitely give us a follow on uh social media so we can uh keep you up to date on all of those events as well as our webpage raptor center of tampa bay.org all that would be on there as well for those that are social media savvy or don't oh, like to or don't like it you know there, there's some <laughs> of us out there that don't absolutely um, do you have any questions about the center or about our ambassadors or any of our events coming up or what we can come do for you? Because we can always bring these guys to you for any event that you would like. Um, it's just a request for a donation and we will gladly uh, come out with our ambassadors to your event, your corporate event, your kid's birthday party, as I said, a random poker night, uh, whatever you like, and just to spread the education that we love to that they love to share with you. So, so Nancy, would you would you go to the chat and put your uh, website on there, 
and your phone number. Yeah, so let so me ask you, what can the Sierra Club, what can we do to help with you? No, we don't have millions of dollars. So how else no, can we No, but help? if you, you know, I can tell you we're looking for um, sponsors for a lot of our conservation education um, programs that we're doing and we're getting ready to kick off in the fall. Uh, we have a group called Nature's Guardians that Susie works with and um, they, uh, it's, a, it's a free nature club for kids. So I, I don't know if you guys would be interested in being a sponsor um, for some of the conservation education, which would go along very well with your mission. Um, we do talk to kids a lot about, uh, you know, the, the, the need for preserving land and um, certainly the laws that have to be passed that's in the animal's favor. Uh, but um, our focus is conservation education. We are working to get a center. Um, I have some exciting news that nobody knows yet, but we may be getting a piece of land um, pretty soon. And uh, so we're working on that. Uh, we have a, we just obtained a big corporate sponsor today. And um, I'll, I'll tell you, it's Duke Energy. And uh, that we've been helping them out with their birds for a long time. And uh, so, so they've just signed on. We'll be doing some more um, outreach programs um, with them. So, but I, I think, you know, in terms of, of how you can help us, it would be supporting, you know, our conservation education. Yeah. Um, the, the bus is a big thing and, and we certainly plan to do uh, breakfast with the birds. We have a conservation literacy program where we bring uh, books that's on animals uh, and birds and sea life to, um, you know, where people can, kids can actually take the books. And, and with Nature's Guardian, the last thing that we did were animal tracks. And we went to Golden Astor Preserve and let them look for all the different animal prints that were out there. And then they actually were able to make uh, a, ca a cast of those uh, paw prints. And we even think there was one that was a panther. I'm pretty sure it was a panther. <laughs> Well, that's it. But that's a, that's the benefit of casting tracks is being yeah. able to take it back and say, this is how big it is. This is what it looked yeah. like. This is what it measured by, you know. Um, but we do think we definitely saw uh, panther tracks at yeah. Golden Aster. So but we do a lot of stuff with the kids and the education. And until we get and, and actually solidify a piece of land and just the, the short you know, nickel version of what happened is we were gifted a piece of land uh, three years ago. The. Um, People who sold the land to our volunteers subdivided it illegally. Hillsborough County wouldn't let us build on it. We went and talked to the county commissioners. Um, we, we did a lot of stuff, but in the end, uh, the person who bought the land ended up suing them. We kind of threw in the towel and said, it's not our fight. It's, it wasn't our piece of land and we can't build on it. So we started looking for other land and that's, that's where we currently are. And maybe, you know, we do have a couple of, of good promises. And our goal is to build a conservation education center with rehabilitation as part of it um, in a center that is uh, focused really all about conservation and, and, and just in this area. Um, but we want to be a conservation center of which rehabilitation is just one piece of. Great. You've got great aspirations and I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, People that have been on on this uh, meeting tonight are uh, would like to get involved. So thank you all for having us. I, it, I, Zoom for me is a little awkward, so I hope this was okay for you. Um, but uh, uh, all of us here at the Raptor Center, I certainly support what you do at Sierra Club and appreciate um, always going to bat for the for the environment. And we do rescue any Florida native wildlife. Yep, mostly our raptors, but. We've been known to have a bunch of possums. Well, and we have a fox and we've had coyotes yeah. and yeah, we kind of get stuck with a little bit of everything, but uh, the big the big birds of prey are, are really our, our thing. Our thing. Yeah. We're basically kind of like the web. You can call us and we can find help for any native wildlife. We, uh, we, we know triage. who we are we, we, and we'll, we'll triage. Yeah, we definitely will take anything and, and yeah. treat it. And But something that's like a, you know, 30 pound bobcat that needs to be handled with a catch pole. We're not your folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll chase down, we'll chase down a bald eagle or great horned owl any day of the week, but that fur Rock. and teeth we're not as good with. So again, thank you for having us. Thank you for, so much for coming. We have some really nice comments. Loved this program. Thank you so much. You are awesome and super inspiring. Thank you. So people have enjoyed it. Thank you so Thank much you. again. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Bye, everyone. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah.
So I, I wonder what happened to our barn owls we released. Uh, so we always wonder what happened to them all. They're out there, Rocky. They're reproducing, making baby barn owls. Yeah, Wolf Branch Creek, I've been, I'm doing some shorebird surveys yeah. out there. And think, I, think positive thoughts. We pulled a lot of owls out of that area. <laughs> and where we did the All right, you guys, I got to figure out how to just connect. So thank you. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I just, you just hit in. And if anybody else wants to stay on the call and chat, we kind of do that in a little bit. Um, okay. I'm going to leave. I found the button. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot, Nancy. Thanks, thank Nancy. you. Bye, Nancy. Bye bye, everyone. So I hope everybody enjoyed this, uh, me being a birder, and we have a few other birders on here. Uh, so Nancy's a birder, so, and it's it's really good to see these things. Um, Di and they were very fortunate. They found these five barn owls that fell out of, you, does everybody know where, um, on 275, the big printing company is right with 275, the ones that send you the blue envelopes? Uh, can't think of the name of it. Right there past uh before you get to Gandhi on 275 in St. Pete, there's a billboard right that value pack. Value pack. There's a billboard right there beside value pack. And a barn owl built a nest in that billboard right by the interstate, and five babies fell out. And so Nancy got them, and her and I worked on, we got them rehabilitated, and we released uh three at Wolf Branch Creek and then we released, released two at uh, Upper Manatee Preserve, pretty close to where the burring owls are. Uh, it was quite a sight. Uh, we got some really cool pictures and it was kind of neat to see. They were, when they first fell out of the nest, they didn't have any feathers. They just have down on them and see them go from that stage to flying away. It's just like, it's pretty, feels pretty good. And one of the things that a lot of, Sierra Clubs and Audubons do. They have a, a barn owls will take the boxes very well. So will screech owls take the boxes. In fact, in England, farmers are paid that apple and cherry orchards, they're paid to put up barn owl boxes uh, because it, they eat so many rats at night. Um, in fact, Tico has told me, told me about a month ago, I have some barn owl boxes, said that we could, they've got some places we could put up some barn owl boxes and they take the boxes. In fact, anybody ever been to Apollo Beach Boat Club? You know where that is? Um, yes, I, I do. Okay. If you go to Apollo Beach Boat Club, they called Nancy one day and they found three baby barn owls inside they have an open shed where they take forklifts and put the boats up on racks. Well, there was a boat that had been in there for about a year and never been moved. It had a barn owl nest in it. So Nancy called me and I went over there and sure enough, there was barn owls, about five of them living in this big shed. But the guy also had rat poison out. And I talked to the owner, who's the same guy that owns the Circles restaurant there. And I exp explained to him about barn owls, how many rats they eat, and rat poison. So I said, I'll bring you a box. So I took him a box over there, and he mounted it. And he's built five more boxes and mounted them inside his building. So, so with, with just talking to people, you can... Uh, and there are a lot of barn owls in warehouse areas where, you're, where there's a lot of warehouses, there's a lot of barn owls. Uh, and they're around, you don't see them, but they're around. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. There's a lot down in the sugar fields too. They have a problem with them down there they, because they, they, they want to just take over everything else. They not only kill the rats, they, they go after everything at night, so, but they eat a lot. So Rocky, Paul, Paul has his hand up. Okay. Hey, Paul. Yeah. Just uh, two quick points um, or a point and a question. Uh, does this still need to be recording since it's like post the meeting? Yeah. Uh, just, 